Hello and God bless, this is your brother Tally, and today I'm coming with a little bit of a quicker video than the previous ones, which were forever, right? Um, if you haven't viewed the, uh, two, the two videos on, on Nimrod, you might not understand this video, uh, but I'm sure that some of you have already, so you will. If not, you can view them on the channel, or I'll put a link on uh, the War Information tab for you to view. Now, this message is, is particular for pastors, for those who call themselves pastors. And m I have a challenge for some of you that are watching this video today that belong to congregations. Because my goal is that by the end of the video, you feel so convicted that you will share this with your pastor if indeed you believe your pastor may fall under this category. Um, we're talking about Freemasons in the church, the invasion of Freemasons in the church. And when I say the church, I mean congregations. And today, if you're a Freemason in a church, today you're confronted with the question, are you going to choose the church or the lodge? Which will it be? You can't have it both ways. Which will it be? Now, 2 Timothy 4, 2 through 5 says the following. Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season, convince, rebuke, and exhort, with all long suffering and teaching, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, and they will heap up for themselves teachers, and they will turn their ears away from the truth, and be turned aside to fables. To fables. But you should be watchful in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. Now the Word of God tells us leaders to be ready in season and out of season to convince, rebuke, and exhort. But when you look at today's congregation, you don't see any convincing, you don't see any rebuking, and you don't see any exhorting. The only thing that you see is itchy ears and fables. And that's what you see in the majority of mega churches all around the United States of America. Little fables, little convincing, little itching of ears. And how can we lead a church if we're not in the word? How can we lead a congregation if all we're interested in is financial means, financial gain, status of your popularity, and so forth? You can't. You can't. Jude 1, 3, 2, 4. And then we're going to get to the nitty gritty as to what people are worshipping, uh, what these pastors are actually worshipping. Jude 1, 3, 2, 4. Beloved, while I was very diligent to write to you concerning our common salvation, I found it necessary to write to you exhorting you to contend earnestly for the faith, which was once for all delivered to the saints. Look at this. For certain men have crept in unnoticed. Are you one of those certain men that's watching this video right now cringing your teeth? I believe so. Who long ago were marked out for this condemnation, ungodly men who turn the grace of our God into lewdness and deny the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. We're going to see right now how this Bible verse applies to some of you Masons watching me today. That It's impossible for you to be a Mason and a believer. It's impossible for you to be a Mason and a disciple of God. The Word of God says further in Ezekiel 33.6, but if the watchman sees the sword coming and does not blow the trumpet to warn the people and the sword comes and takes the life of one of them, that man will be taken away because of his sin. But I will hold the watchman accountable for his blood. If God has called you to be a leader, if God has called you to be a pastor, if God has called you to have a YouTube channel to preach the word, how on earth are you mixing yourself in the table of demons by going to these lodges? Yeah, they have offered you success. Yeah, they have offered you money. They've offered you popularity. They've offered you so much. But what? You look at the result. You can't preach about sin in your church. You can't preach about hell in your church. You can't preach about holiness in your church. You can't preach on about Horus, Isis, Nimrod, Tammuz, Baal. You can't preach on this in your church. How is it that I was able to make a video? Part 1 and Part 2 of Nimrod. Part 1 and Part 2 of the Jezebel Hollish Spirit. I'm not that educated, man. And I work 40, 50 hours a week. Okay? I have a family just like anybody else. I haven't got no seminary school. How is it that I know this information and you don't? Of course you do. But you're hiding this information from the congregation. 
You're hiding this information from those that are in your church. Why? Because you're being watched by other Masons. And why? Because a very large majority of the population that are in many churches in America belong to the Freemasons. There was a, um, a survey done in 1991, and there's a reason why there hasn't been another one recently. So, 20 years ago there was a survey, and look what it indicated. U.S. membership in the Masons is claimed to be about 3 million, with about 5 million worldwide. The official magazine of Freemasonry in the United States is titled New Age. Some church denominations are also led by avowed Masons. For example, in 1991, the survey by the Southern Baptist Convention Sunday School Board found that 14% of SBC pastors and 18% of SBC Deacon Board Chairs are Masons. It is also estimated that SBC members compromise 37% of the U.S. Lodge membership. 37% of the, of the U.S. membership of the Masons in 1991 comprised of church members. Okay. Now in, in, in 2000 the SBC report found that over 1,000 SBC pastors are members still. So you can imagine the the pressure that these pastors have to have when they're faced with uh, a church that is practically ran by Masons. Not all churches are like this, but you can tell which churches are and you can tell which churches aren't. You can tell which churches are preaching the scriptures, the word of God, and you can tell which aren't. It's that simple. And when you see a pastor that supposedly is a doctor, but the man can't heal a fly, and they call themselves doctors and this and that, but they can't preach the word. All they talk is about sowing and reaping and planting your seed here and your miraculous life here and God wants to bless you here. They don't preach about, they don't preach about sin. They don't preach about hell. They don't preach about heaven. They don't preach about miracles. Miracles? These people don't preach about miracles. Nothing is being preached in these churches. These are lukewarm dead churches because as Jude 1, 3 to 4 says, for certain men have crept in unnoticed. And that is what's happening. Now, 1 Corinthians 10, 20 to 22 says the following. The sacrifices of pagans are offered to demons, not to God. And I do not want you to be participant with demons. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons too. You cannot have part in the, both the Lord's table and the table of demons. Are we trying to arouse the Lord to jealousy? Are we stronger than he? 1 Corinthians 10, 20 to 22. You have to understand that when a person who is a pastor uh, enters uh, a Freemason group, there's several degrees that he has to attain. Now you have to understand that Freemason teaches that there is only one God. And that men of all religions worship that one God using a variety of different names. It in the Masonic Lodge all joined corporate prayer to the great architect of the universe, the Gautu, as some people refer it to, and this is part of the new global religion. This is why you see that in Christian churches there is something now called Christlam. This is why you see that even um, members um, of so many different churches are preaching that you can reach God through Hindu, you can reach God uh, through Islam, you can reach God through the Christian system, uh, the Catholic system. You can't. There's only one way, and that way is Jesus Christ, Yeshua the Christ. And He is the only way to the Father. Religion will not satisfy the depths of the human heart. It is about a relationship with God, and you can only attain that relationship through Jesus Christ, which He is the way to the Father. Just as in the tabernacle, there was one entrance, and that one entrance led to the holies of holies. There is one way, one path, and that path is very, very narrow. And a lot of people are missing the mark, and I pray every single day that I don't miss the mark. And I pray that today you realize that I hope that you don't miss the mark, because you're sacrificing and eating at a, at a table of demons. How can you sit in these lodges and you have a Hindu person on your right pray, praying to the great architect of the universe. You have a, um, a Wiccan on the left praying to the great architect of the universe. And you're praying to the great architect of the universe. How on earth can you sit there with a clear conscience and then leave that place and go pastor a church and tell them to live their best life now? Are you kidding me? What is wrong with you? Don't you understand that when you're sitting there that they're not worshiping the same God that you're worshiping? That you're sitting there and you're honoring them and saying, Amen, Amen, and this and that be just because they 
are mentioning the great grand architect of the universe, that's not the same God of the Bible. God is a jealous God and he called us to do better than that. More importantly, Masons are sworn to secrecy, not once but several times, before they participate in, the, in, in one of the main rituals, which is Hiram Abif. Uh, it's a ritual where he actually dies, is buried, and they're raised from the grave. At the conclusion of this ritual, those in the lodges are told to imitate Hiram Abif so they can get into heaven. Do you want to know who Hiram Abif is? It is Osiris, it is Nimrod. A lot of people believe that it is a character from the Bible, but it has nothing to do with the scriptures. That is just the main intent to try to get Christians to follow the ways of the Freemans, but it's a lie. I'm going to show you several ways where Hiram Abif is very similar to Osiris. Uh, which is Nimrod. The fundamental similarity between these two stories may be seen in many aspects. Uh, these are just a few. Both men, both Hiram Abif, according to the legend, and Osiris, Nimrod, went to foreign lands to share their knowledge, uh, to civilize mankind, and to teach them the arts of the stars and sciences. In both legends of Osiris and Hiram Abif, there is a precious thing possessed. In Hiram, when he was killed, it was the secret word. And in Osiris, when he was killed, it was the kingdom. In both legends, they were wicked, and there was a wicked conspiracy to kill them by evil men to attain their precious thing. In both legends, there is a struggle and a murder of a virtuous leader. In Hiram's case, it was him. In Osiris, it was him when he was cut up into 14 pieces. Both are murdered by their brothers. Osiris was murdered by Typhoon and Hiram by Jubilum, his brother, Mason. Both are buried hastily with the intention of a later deliberate burial. Locations of the bodies are both marked by Acacia at the head. In both legends, there are two separate searches for the body. In both legends, there is a loss of something precious. In Hiram's death, the secret word is lost. In Osiris' death, the phallus is lost. In both, there is a substitution for the precious thing that has been lost. In conquering Hiram, it is the substitute for the Greek secret word. Concerning Osiris, it is the substitute phallus. Hiram's body is found at King after 13 days, and Osiris' body was cut up in 14 pieces. So as you can see very, very clearly, Hiram Abif is Osiris, and as you see in the last two videos, Osiris is Nimrod. They inspired all of these false religions. All of these mystics, all of these false gods, false paths, false trinities, all inspired by Satan in Nimrod. And as I told you before, Nimrod is returning. And I'm not talking about Nimrod the physical man, but the spirit that was in Nimrod, that Antichrist spirit, is returning again to wage war on man. And I believe he's already here. So I want you to get ready and I want you to get prepared. And if you're a pastor, a mason, who is worshipping Hirama Beef, who you've done that ritual of Hirama Beef, I pray that you step down today and you repent and you seek the kingdom of God before it is too late. Before it is too late. You have to understand that Jesus Christ is coming soon. And he's not coming for a church that is lukewarm. He's not coming for uh, a church that is just lallygagging every single day. He's coming for people that are on fire for God. Okay? And... You cannot call yourself a pastor, you cannot call yourself a minister on YouTube if you're worshipping God and worshipping with the Freemasons. And you can tell a lot of these people that are ministers that are following these Freemasons because you can tell by the hand signs. How many times do I not see preachers on TV preaching the gospel and they're throwing sixes up there, the Baphomet. And you can understand that some people by mistake they may mix certain hands at times, whatever. But you don't do that on a daily basis. Every time they mention Satan, they throw sixes. Every time they mention something, they throw the Baphomet. You're like, it's not, it's, it's more than a routine. Okay? It's more than a routine. So, we know you're out there. You're being exposed, not only by me, but by a lot of people on YouTube. But the problem is, people don't want to listen. Okay? And if you're a person who has actually listened today to this message, and you're saying, you know what? I believe my pastor could be a Mason. I believe they've tried to recruit me to be a Mason in my church, because that happens. Show this video to him, and hopefully in love, when he's hearing me today, he can say, Man, you know what? This guy has a point. Let me step down, and let me believe, and let me repent. But in reality, I don't hold too much hope to that. Only God can save. Only God can, to can touch people. My job is to ensure that I do as the scriptures say in Ezekiel, to watch and to warn. You've been warned. 
You've learned who Nimrod is. You've learned who Isis is, the Queen of Heaven. You've learned about the false trinity. You've learned about the true identity of God. You've learned about a lot of things in this last month, and I've learned right along with you. We have no excuse, church. It's time for us to rise and expect more. There's a revolution happening in the church. People are waking up. And the time for us to drink milk is, is, is ended. It's time for us to dig into the meat. Uh, believe and repent. Turn away from Freemasons. Turn away from those lodges. Will you pick the church or will you pick the lodge today? You decide.